How could it be you were telling a truthful lie? This is a challenge we all face on a daily basis, but it's particularly prominent in the art world. Art galleries are all but synonymous with forgery, laundering, and straight up lies. But some art forgers will even go the length of playing scientist in order to dupe their audience. For instance, Dutch artist Hans van Meunen. In the early 20th century, scorned by the art world for his lack of critical success, he sought to make a fool out of his detractors by copying the words of famous artists. He spent six long years studying their techniques, but it would take more than just talent for him to get away with it. One of the most valuable methods to detect a big art is X-ray technology. By passing X-ray radiation through a work of art, certain details of the piece absorb more radiation than others, allowing you to see an image not unsimilar to the skeletal X-rays you get at the doctor's office. Techniques using these technologies can reveal a variety of evidence, such as fibers in the canvas that can be compared to those favored by the artist in question, or underpaintings that the artist had made in their process. And Meagren had already encountered such a roadblock in 1923 when an attempt to copy Fran Hall's The Laughing Cavalier failed due to even an early X-ray test. X-ray diffraction tests scattered X-rays through the crystal pigments and found traces of zinc oxide and synthetic ultramarine, materials that were not available in Hall's time. However, this event only made Van Gerenen more diligent, and he set his sights on becoming a perfect replica artist of Johannes Vermeer. While practicing, he learned to pay more attention to his chemical strategy, looking up materials that were used in Vermeer's time, such as azurite, smalt, and indigo. He also started mixing Bakelite into his paintings, a plastic-based chemical compound that would resist an alcohol smudging, a technique used to detect fakes at the time. As to age the paintings, he would cover them in a thin layer of resin and bake them, which would cause them to crack, as well as yellow when in contact with ultraviolet light. Meagren saw his work paying off in 1937, when he sold the painting Supper in a Mosque for over $4 million. He would go on a streak of selling fake Vermeers for high prices. To give an idea of how airtight Van Meagren's chemical process was, in 1947, he was brought on trial because during World War II, he had sold a painting to Hermann Gorey, a Nazi military leader that was believed to be a famous piece of Dutch heritage titled Christ and the Adulterers. In order to get the lighter sentence, he had to prove a doubtful jury that he could have forged the paintings, since they seemed too realistic for that to be possible. He wasn't believed until he made a painting directly under court official supervision, at which point he managed to flip the script as being a folk hero who had swindled the Nazis, even though he was far too willing to work with them in the first place. A still in the story as that is. Would Van Meeren have been able to get away with it today? Probably not. Advancements in the field of forensics would have been able to instantly deduce the resin coating in a simple swab test. Van Meeren never prepared for UV light under black light. When put to a painting, the older varnishes will glow bright blue, while the newer touch-ups will appear in duller. An even more intricate technique, called Fourier Transform Infrared Microspectroscopy, or FTIR, can analyze the bonds between atoms within the paints as they are exposed to infrared light. By observing the frequency that they vibrate, these results, referred to as a spectrum, can be compared to other pigments to more closely tell if they're different or not. This method was famously used in 2003 to discover a collection of 32 of Jackson Pollock's paintings that were found in a storage closet, in fact, all fabrications. Still, Van Meegren's crime not only made him a respected artist in his own right, but showed us that the line between a chemist and an artist can be as blurry as the one between the unreal and the real.